So today I'm talking about a P2252 code, what it is and how you could go about fixing it. And so what is a P2252 code? Well, it's an O2 sensor, negative current control, circuit low, bank one, sensor one. And so what does this mean? Well, basically located down on the exhaust is what's called O2 sensors. And these oxygen sensors, they do two things. The first thing they do is they monitor the catalytic converter. And then the second thing they do is they monitor how much oxygen has been burnt off during combustion. And the computer uses that information to adjust the air fuel ratio mixture that's going into the cylinders. But when you get this P2252 code, the computer's seen a problem with one of these sensors, mainly with the bank one sensor 102 sensor. And so it's going to be troubleshooted to know why. And if you have a V6 or V8 engine, the engine's going to have two banks. Bank one is always inside of the engine with the number one cylinder. And the opposite of that is bank two. So if you Google your engine and like cylinder location and you find the number one cylinder on your engine, then that side of the engine is going to be bank one. If you have a four cylinder engine, then the engine will only have one bank. And so what are some possible causes of a P2252 code? Well, the main thing that's going to cause is either that bank one sensor 102 sensor that has gone bad and needs to be replaced or the wiring going to it. The basics of what's going on with these O2 sensors is that there's going to be two on each bank of the engine. Sensor one is going to be located before the catalytic converter, and it's also called the upstream O2 sensor. And sensor two is going to be located after the catalytic converter, and it's also called the downstream O2 sensor. And when you get this P2252 code, the sensor to go and locate on the vehicle is going to be this bank one sensor one O2 sensor. There's some different ways to go about testing these sensors. If you have a multimeter, you can use that. If you have a good OBD2 scan tool with live data or data stream, you can also use that to go and check these sensors. There's some good videos on that. I've made videos on that. I'll put a link down in the description box below if you want to go and check that out. But the first thing I would go and do is I go and test that O2 sensor and be sure that it's good. The next thing that could cause this is that there's some kind of issue going on inside the wiring. There's like an open, there's a short, a blowing fuse, something like this. And there can be different types of O2 sensors. There could be two wire sensors, three wire sensors. These four wire sensors are fairly common, but it's always a good idea to get a diagram for your specific vehicle. That way you know for sure what's going on. But the basics of what's going on with most of these O2 sensors is that there's gonna be two parts to them. You're gonna have the oxygen sensor part that's reading how much oxygen is inside the exhaust, but then they also have these heater elements built into them. And basically the oxygen sensor part can't start to get good readings until the sensor gets hot. So that the computer doesn't have to wait for the engine to warm up, the exhaust to warm up. And they built in these heater elements to help that sensor quickly warm up. These heater elements are usually only activated when the engine's cold. So like for the first minute or something like that. Again, this can vary. So be sure to get a wiring diagram or schematic for that particular vehicle. Also, usually these have 12 volts going to them, and they'll be on a fuse and a relay. The oxygen sensor part is going to have two wires going back to the computer. You're going to have a signal wire and a signal ground wire. So if you get wiring schematics for that particular vehicle, you can go and check this wiring. Be sure you've got 12 volts going to that heater element when the engine's cold. And then also check the wires going back to the computer and be sure those are good. Also, keep in mind, these could be on a fuse and a relay. Again, this could vary on where the fuses are located, on the name that the manufacturer gives it, different things like this. So you will need to do a little research on that particular vehicle to know what's going on. But for example, this is a Toyota right here where it's labeled AF heater. That's going to be the fuse going to the heater element on those O2 sensors. And over here it's labeled AF heater. That's the relay going to that heater element on those O2 sensors. So it can be a good idea to do a little research on the vehicle and check to see if there's a fuse and a relay and be sure they're good. Because the main things that's going to cause this is either that bank one sensor one O2 sensor has gone bad or the wiring going to it. And so that's basically it. I just wanted to give a basic overview of how you go about fixing a vehicle with the P2252 code. If you have anything to add, please comment down below. If you have any questions, ask me. I'll try to answer them. If this video helps you, please click like, please click subscribe, and have a good day.